All right, what do we feel? How many of you ever been to, have, are now just having this, this, this conflict, this internal conflict? Your old ball coach lied to you. Oh, man. Dude, they're probably teaching this. Uh, I know Navy strength and conditioning coach. I wanted to jab at him. Go Army. But they're probably not teaching this in Navy. I'm just kidding. But anyway, so we are taught to squat. We are taught to catch a power clean. We're taught to do all these things with the perspective of they're just teaching you movements. Their goal is to get you stronger, put on some hypertrophy, some armor, right, a meat suit. But the objective is not always taken with the perspective of athleticism, the filter of athleticism. And that's our goal, all right? Yes, there's, it's not this squat versus that squat. No, it's teaching our athletes to move and become better athletes. When their end goal is football, when their end goal is lacrosse, basketball, things outside the weight room, it's not about the weight room, okay? Uh, how many of you have heard the term feedback throughout every single speech this weekend? I'm picking up on it. Are you picking up on it? Tim, Timbo's got me. Yeah, I, want, I was thinking about it and I, I took the notes. I got my notes from the weekend, just scribbled on these, these little guys here. But I was thinking about it and I want you to understand something. That coaching, right, it's providing feedback for the movement, right? We have our athlete move. Then a coach comes in and they give them some direction, whether it's hands-on, body position, right? Verbal cues, directions. But as a coach, I'm looking at movement. I'm looking at competition. And movement becomes my feedback for my coaching. Like, is that working? Is the directions I'm providing carrying over to where they matter? The field, the court, the rink. Are they injury-free, right? And Brian Mann's collecting a lot of data and he's applying it to then how he teaches the movements. There is something taken for granted, right? It's that coaching aspect. What program do you follow? Oh, I love that programming. But coaching, that's what, it, that's what it's all about. It's all freaking here. I absolutely love it. Understand how you direct, how you teach, how you guide. If it's playing, training for a sport, posture and position. Teach through posture and position. Teach through posterior chain dominance. Teach through proficiency. That's our goal. Get them proficient moving through space. That's transfer. That's specificity. That's transfer of training to the field. All the, the buzzwords that people want to write about. It's nearly impossible to write, right? And, and put coaching into perspective because every athlete is different. But if we co can communicate, can guide through these three themes, posture and position, Proficiency, posterior chain dominance, we can protect from injury. So Carl, oh man, I gotta call out Austin again. Come on out, pal. Now show us your newfound athletic position. All right, looks great. So now, now imagine, we're back to it. He's changing direction. He takes that hard plant with his left. And I represent inertia going that way. So imagine that's still going on. Austin now, he's in a setup, stable position. Posture position, preventing any risk of injury where force travels straight down from that hip through the knee, through now shin, foot, safe from injury, into the ground. The beauty now, if he takes the idea of pushing as he moves through space and carries over to this, he's going to be aggressive now that he's running the ball and he, an opponent that's bigger than him, <coughs> excuse me guys, comes <laughs> crashing down on him, he's going to take a hard plant with that left. Inertia. Center gravity down through the leg. If he's in a good position, force is able to travel back up into his body. And he can be stronger than we can ever put a number into a spreadsheet in the weight room. Force is coming back into his center of gravity. He can now take on. That's where we see Maurice Jones-Drew decleating, right? Sean Merriman. Lowest man wins. He's also in a good solid position in which he can use force and inertia to his advantage. And we can take smaller athletes and make them more powerful against the guys that should be winning. But nah, we're creating those power athletes. We're moving as fast as we can. We are imposing our will as we move through space. So good position allows us to use physics to our advantage. And one, reduce injury. I care about that. Two, become more powerful than we can ever see in the weight room. So good posture position. Using that posterior chain dominance, guys, to reverse that, in, that force. So we have force production, we got force reduction, and we got reversing force, like using it to our advantage 